Okay, the topic of this video is transport proteins. Looking here at our phospholipid bilayer, we see several proteins embedded. Now, I want you to remember, going, looking back, diffusion can occur without any proteins. However, here we're looking at transport proteins. So in these examples, we're looking at um, substances that may need a protein to be able to move them across the phospholipid bilayer. Now, this can be because of their size, because of their charge, for many different reasons, but simply they need a protein. Now, needing a protein does not automatically mean it means energy. Passive transport can occur with channel proteins and carrier-mediated proteins. However, not all carrier proteins are part of the passive transport. Some do require energy, and we call those active transport. Let's look at some of those in more detail. So starting first with active transport, this requires um, energy from ATP, remember adenosine triphosphate, to move substances against the concentration gradient. What this, an example of this is up the concentration gradient. So what this looks like here is if we look at our membrane and we have a high ion concentration here and a low ion concentration up here. Typically, if the process of regular diffusion, just passive um, transfer of materials occurred, these materials would diffuse across the membrane. However, because we're looking at active transport, this is where we're using energy, ATP, to pull these ions, even though there's a low concentration of them, pull them across the membrane to force them over here, even though they don't want to be. So it's kind of like you not wanting to go to class and being out in the hall after passing time, and someone has to come grab you and bring you into class with all your fellow students. So that's an example of active transport moving against the concentration gradient where there's a low amount of concentration and being pulled across to this area of higher concentration. This can be advantageous to the cell if they need this particular ion. Again, active transport requires the use of carrier proteins. There's two types. There can be a membrane pump or coupled transport. So membrane pump, think, when you see the word pump, think of a normal pump. It could be a water pump requiring electricity, requiring energy, it could be petroleum products. Uh, the key part here is requiring energy. In coupled transport, we're going to talk about our co-transport systems here. So again, our active transport requiring energy. Um, ion pumps, they could move. These are sodium ions, potassium ions, calcium ions, magnesium ions. Potassium and sodium exchange pump is a very common pump. Uh, these proton pumps are the moving hydrogen ions, as we see here. It uses photosynthesis or food energy to create a photon concentration, I'm sorry, a proton concentration gradient that then is used to manufacture ATP. <clears throat> so this higher hydrogen ion concentration, this higher proton concentration, uh, is what's being generated here and forced through ATP synthase here to generate ATP. So in order to generate our ATP, we need our protons to want to have a higher concentration in this external environment, in this internal membrane. Moving them across and forcing them over, in this case, is allowing them us to harvest the energy. In this case, we see this um, example here, and we see a lot of folds. Remember our surface area to volume ratio. A lot of folds here indicate this could be um, what a mitochondria does. The mitochondria is forcing um, concentration of gradients and then harnessing that energy um, through its particular protein passing only through one way and as a result taking ADP and a free phosphorus to generate ATP. So proton pump moving hydrogen ions and photosynthesis when we go over that we'll see that in more detail or food energy to create this proton concentration gradient that then is used to manufacture ATP. Because there's a lot of protons here, uh, they want to diffuse across. We, the cell only lets them go through one area, and that's ATP is generated. Looking a little bit more at the membrane pumps, carrier proteins use um, energy from ATP to move substances across the membrane up its concentration gradient. Same thing here. We see a high amount of potassium ions here. We see only a, one on this side. The pump is pumping them in this case, across, requiring energy to move them across, moving that concentration gradient. Here we see again, here's our potassium coming in, and here's our sodium leaving. We see ATP being broken down, indicating energy is being required. Sodium-potassium pump is one um, active transport system. It's very common in cells. 
And again, it's moving the sodium, which is the Na plus here, and the potassium, uh, which is the K. And there's binding, and again, this is just representing a protein requiring energy for this to occur. Active transports carrier mediated, one ATP, so one energy molecule, okay, right here, is moving three sodiums out and two potassiums in. So it's not always an equal number transfer. So here are binding sites. Here we have three green molecules. In this case, these represent the sodiums. And two orange, representing potassium. And this ATP is causing this movement across. It's called a transmembrane potential because it's creating electrical charge across the membrane. So across the membrane is transmembrane. And this potential is an electrical potential. It's because these are both ions, and they're moving not in equal amounts, causing a shift in the amount of charges that occur on one side or the other side of the cell. Here's our proton pump, again, in mitochondrial membranes. In cellular respiration, the proton pump uses energy to transport protons from the matrix of the mitochondria to intermembrane space. What does that mean? We're simply taking our hydrogen ions and we're concentrating them on one side, they want to diffuse across, they can't get through this um, phospholipid bilayer, but they can get through this ATP synthase. That's this big black molecule here. And because they're moving through, as they're moving through, the cell, in this case, the ATP synthase, is harnessing that energy and it's using that flow of protons to take ADP plus the phosphorus to train ATP. This is an active pump that generates proton, proton concentration across the mitochondrial membrane because there are more protons outside the matrix than inside. Okay, and that's the environment here forcing them through. This is part of the reason why mitochondria have so many folds in them, because they are um, having a lot of these ATP synthases in the membranes, allowing a lot of energy to be generated. The co-transport mechanism here, capable of moving substances either with or against their concentration gradients. The key, two, key two terms here are symporters and antiporters. So uniporter, one porter, just moving one thing in one direction. That's what's going on here. Binding here, it's being released and pushed to the other side. Our co-transports are a little different. We classify them in two ways. So example here, we have our sim porter. Two substances move across memory in the same direction. Sim thinks same. Same co-transport. A and B on this side of the cell membrane are being moved to the other side. Here, our antiport system, just as the name implies, Two substances move across the membrane in the opposite directions, in anti-directions. And this is also called a counter-transport system. So we here, see here the triangle is moving this way, and the green square is moving to the other side. In this case here, we see them both binding to our protein, and they're both being released on the other side. Hopefully this helps explain some transmembrane proteins.